When one thinks of goodness, no name comes up with such frequency and poignancy as Mother Teresa. I mean, come on. Most people think her first name is Mother. <laughs> Teresa of Calcutta is an international icon representing simplicity, humanitarianism, and benevolence. Yet Teresa, despite her long list of charitable efforts, is responsible for an equally long list of acts that aren't so admirable. These range from not providing proper medical care at her clinics, some say for her belief that suffering brought one closer to God, to baptizing Hindu patients into Catholicism against their will. Now, I was raised Catholic, so I grew up surrounded by almost constant adulation for Teresa and countless others like her. This is because one of the things that separates Catholicism from the other sects of Christianity and many other religions is the practice of deifying mortal individuals, canonization, making somebody a saint. This happened to Teresa last September. But this practice isn't unique to Catholicism. It happens all the time in secular culture. Our culture is inundated with veneration of individuals. It's because celebrities, especially historical ones, make good symbols to represent ideas, lifestyles, and movements. At first, this seems to work well as it makes for effective imagery. Consider Tesla representing innovation, Gandhi representing nonviolent protest, and Teresa representing charity. However, in a world where ideas are concrete and individuals are an amorphous summation of their actions, when we revere people in this way, we run the risk of endorsing the worst in them. After all, Teresa of Calcutta let individuals die of curable diseases in her clinics, while funding from donations went towards building convents. Mohandas Gandhi sexually abused his grandchildren. Nikola Tesla believed in eugenics, along with Helen Geller, Alexander Graham Bell, and Thomas Edison, and of the 56 men that signed the Declaration of Independence, a document which asserted that all men are created equal, 41 owned African slaves. This is not to say that we should dismiss these people's accomplishments, just the opposite. We should revere and recognize those accomplishments, not the character of the people behind them. When we hold a critical lens to our culture and history's heroes, we earn a greater and more nuanced understanding of their actions. We come back into touch with our sense of our own humanity. And perhaps most importantly, when we remove our icons from their pedestal and can see them objectively, it then becomes our responsibility to fill that ideal. Now, this is no easy task. It's tough knowing and recognizing that the people we learn to admire are guilty of such transgressions. But if we want to live in a truly critical, informed culture, we must always be willing to put our icons on trial.